The jobs report's hot. The Fed's never going to cut. They're not going to cut this whole year, even though the Fed said 75 basis points just a couple weeks ago. The Fed's not going to cut because one jobs report on Friday was super hot, 303,000. Oh, man. Get ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Newport Beach. It is spring break starting tomorrow. So got some monkeys out here. Um, my oldest, who's 11, she just got her first soccer game of the season. She had to sit it out. She's been out of school for three and a half weeks with a concussion. She wound herself up on the swing set at school. And then when she unwound, she leaned back and banged her head. So... Uh, we're finally getting out of concussion protocol after, gosh, four weeks now. And uh, two soccer games today, two yesterday, and big jobs report, jobs week last week, CPI, big inflation data. So let me kind of break it all down real quick. Um, but before we get to that, by the way, I want to say something else on a, on a personal level. For those that know Barry Habib, who's one of my dearest friends, wow, just thinking about that after talking about the health of my daughter, which seems so minuscule of, you know, Barry is uh, an absolute, you know, treasure for our industry. I text him the same. And Dan, uh, he is facing uh, lymphoma and uh, he starts chemo, I believe, this week. And so, um, you know, on behalf of obviously me personally, but PRMG and I'm sure the entire industry, you know, we're obviously hoping for Barry to uh, just fight through it. You know, he's he's a fighter. He's someone we just love so much. And you know, on the backs of what happened with Dave Stevens, it's, um, you know, it's just, we, we want to get a win here. So, uh, Barry, we love you. Fight through it. If there's anything any of us can do at the PRMG family. Gosh, you were on our national retail call on Thursday. Uh, thank you so much, man. He, I know he's he's the man, and we love him so much. So, good luck. Um, in the spirit of Barry and the NBS Highway team, let's break some news down. Uh, gosh, I had a Great chance catching up on some of those videos last night. And uh, the jobs report was hot, right? The jobs report's hot. The Fed's never going to cut. They're not going to cut this whole year, even though the Fed said 75 basis points just a couple weeks ago. The Fed's not going to cut because one jobs report on Friday was super hot, 303,000. Oh, man. Um, so, you know, inflation, price stability, and full employment are a couple different uh, mandates that the Fed is working on. But let's not forget the other one, which is, you know, moderate long-term interest rates. They have a try mandate. We cannot have two and a half percent of the net interest that we pay on our debt be two and a half percent of our GDP. That is untenable. And for those that watch Kathy Wood, after every jobs report, every BLS jobs report, she does a, uh, a breakdown of fiscal policy, monetary policy, a whole bunch of stuff. And when she, uh, when she does that breakdown, Kathy Wood, she talks about the net interest. And by 2050, that number is supposed to be 6% of our GDP. That is unsustainable. But she also talks about gross domestic income and the percentage of gross domestic income, okay, which is different than gross domestic product. GDI income is not keeping up with our GDP, which is very interesting. And the job support on Friday confirmed that wage inflation is slowing. So, yeah, jobs are created, and we'll break down what that meant. But year over year, month over month, that number went from 4.3% wage inflation to 4.1%. Remember, the inflation part of the jobs report is that wage pi uh, price spiral. Wages keep going up because the job you know, market is so strong. And therefore, that pushes prices up for services and goods. Not so fast. It's coming down in that jobs report. And that 303,000 jobs, a big component was education and healthcare, And then the biggest single component was government jobs. Now, we have a lot of fiscal stimulus from the government. And um, that's typically something that helps an economy get out of a recession or recession-like uh, times. Well, we've had a manufacturing recession, uh, which... Finally, last week, we had a positive, slightly positive, slightly over 50, 
uh, on the manufacturing index finally had a positive growth manufacturing number for the first time in 18 months. And um, of course, housing, we've been in a rolling recession, finally kind of sneaking our way out of it. But that jobs report, it's a mixed bag. It's got a lot of temp workers that are in there, but temp uh, employment is actually falling overall, which is a sign typically of an economy uh, slowing growth. And we know the economy is slowing growth because we had a 4.9% Q3 GDP. We had a 3.4% Q4. And the Atlanta Fed um, actually just raised their guidance for Q1 to 2.5. They raised their guidance because of the higher manufacturing number, uh, which is good. But 2.5 is still less than 3.4. So we have slowing growth. So um, that's good for inflation. And so is lower wage inflation. But you know what? We're going to get a, as Tom Lee from Fundstrat says, we're going to get our first clean look at inflation on Wednesday. What I mean by that is there's a lot of distortion in the data for January and February. There's some prices being raised. Um, got some wonky seasonal adjustments and numbers. But this Wednesday, the Consumer Price Index, which isn't the Fed's favorite gauge of inflation, um, but it's still very important. The CPI comes out Wednesday at PPI. Producer Price Index comes out on Thursday, which we expect PPI to be a little bit hot because of rising uh, oil prices and energy prices and gas prices. But this CPI is expected to be at 0.3%. That's the estimate. So we'll see. Remember, CPI has a very high number of uh, housing uh, elements in it, whether it's home prices, owner's equivalent rent, which is a big part that's been sticky. We all know rent's coming down on new rents, uh, but um, owner's equivalent rents, lodging away from home, about 40% of the CPI is housing and housing-related inputs, whereas the PCE, the personal consumption expenditures, came out uh, not too long ago. The Fed deflator, the Fed's preferred gauge of inflation, only about 17.5% of that up front is a one piece on housing. So CPI, we'll see. Clean read, lots going on. Um, you know, if, if you want to get some of my sources of information I look at, I'll just kind of go through them. And just kind of digest it and put in my own, you know, thoughts. But um, obviously, love uh, Barry and Dan Abib and the whole team over at MBS Highway. They've got great data. They broke down the jobs report uh, very impressively. Uh, so you know, give it a look and uh, listen to Barry's personal message uh, message from Friday. Um, I subscribe to Fundstrat, Tom Lee, Kathy Wood, Ark Invest, especially her report after every uh, once a month after the jobs report. Great breakdown got a bunch of other inputs as well so just sharing my my information so uh so what do we have to look forward to besides inflation data well spring spring break kids are off catalina island in the background um i have to work but uh my kids will be enjoying some tacos and i might have a espresso martini and a margarita here so i hope you guys have a fantastic week a lot more to talk about i'll get some more videos out later this week cheers Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. It is a Tuesday night and the CPI report comes out in the morning. Why is that important? Because all everyone talks about is inflation. But before we go there, talk about a couple other things. Um, talk about some things regarding the jobs report that have kind of just kept coming out. And so everyone knows that I, um, I listen to a bunch of different data sources and read a bunch of stuff. And I just want to make some points. We have a lot of like, hey, the economy's doing okay here, but not so well here, and the jobs report was good here, but not well there. And so there's just so much data that's kind of, I don't say conflicting, but it gives you a little bit for everyone. So for those of us that think that got to get to 2%, only 2%, until we get to 2%, the Fed's not cutting, and that's it, end of story. You know, it's kind of a binary way of thinking. The Fed doesn't necessarily think that way. They even said as much that you don't have to be at 2% on the PCE poor reading. But then you've got the jobs report, which is hot. But then you got a lot of temp workers that, you know, I mean, is this economy going to stay afloat because people are having to get a second job and be, you know, a driver for Uber or Lyft or DoorDash or whatever on the side? I mean, is that going to float our economy? So, you know, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. And so I'm trying not to be biased. Of course, I want rates to get cut. Of course, that's great for industry. Um, interest rates are better for housing affordability. It's better for demand. 
we don't have enough supply. So then, of course, home prices will go up. So if you're a homeowner, it'll be great for your equity. Uh, but then it makes it less affordable. So, you know, damn if you do, damn if you don't. We're just going to keep rolling with the punches here. But let me talk just a little bit about the jobs report and then get into the CPI. So the jobs report last week, um, there's, remember, there's two different components. There's like the establishment survey, you know, they call on businesses and stuff. And then there's the household survey. Household jobs are not growing. They're, they're slowing growth. So, um, you know, a temp job or a second job or, you know, if you have, you know, um, a 1099 job or, you know, anything like that, like a Schedule C, that any little thing you do on the side that you've never done before, if it pops up, then, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a second job. But we all know that, you know, first jobs, gainful employment in this economy on your first job is what keeps spending going. We also know that baby boomers make up half of this country's net worth. 75 trillion of the, let's call it 150 trillion, just for simple math's sake. I think the number's like 154, 155 trillion. Boomers are floating in this economy. We are having a widening wealth gap. And boomer wealth is keeping things afloat. They're paying for dinners and travel and hospitality and leisure, which is where some of the job growth is coming from. Um, and so, you know, we have to look at all these different things when we look at the jobs report. And we look at how strong it was. So what are some other internals in there? Um, gross domestic income um, is not keeping up with gross domestic product. And why is that important? I mentioned this on my Sunday video. Um, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, Chief Investment Officer. She's amazing. Please, 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 if you have not watched her video, at once a month, she puts out a video from ARK Invest, ARK Invest, A-R-K. And it's Kathy Wood, K-A-T-H-I-E, which has a whole breakdown of monetary policy, fiscal policy, a lot of different stuff. And she does it once a month, right when the jobs report comes up. It's very interesting to hear her talk about, um, you know, when she says that typically uh, the money supply is negative and when it's negative, typically when it's negative, the CPI always follows it. So when is inflation going to fall? Um, her stance was that the owner's equivalent rent portion of the CPI, which is something we're going to watch for tomorrow. You know, I own a house. What could I rent it for? Right. Which we all know in January and February, they changed the amount of all this rental data by um, including 5% more single family rental prices in the rental data that's out there. Um, and so, but that's a 12 month lagging indicator. So someone that signed a lease 12 months ago when it was more expensive to rent, they're still showing up in the data until tomorrow. So every month the CPI report comes out, the old higher rent comes off and is replaced by new um, rents, which are lower for new rents. And by the way, if there's gamesmanship going on with that number and single family rental amounts are being put in there, that could actually keep that number up on new rents. It's like a way to kind of like, well, let's take more expensive housing and put that in the rental data as opposed to more apartment and multifamily so you can like play with the numbers. Anyway, I digress. Her point is that CPI should be falling. And tomorrow is the first, quote, clean report. It's a clean report, according to Tom uh, Lee at Fundstrat. Don't have the distortion of the data of January and February. So we're going to see CPI, which has a humongous over 40% component in it of housing, which we know is expensive still. And when rates come down, we know housing prices are going to go up. All the, all the housing prices... HPI indicators, not median home sales price, but like Case Schiller and FHFA and CoreLogic, um, they all have home prices that have been going up, even including the last five or six months, with their, which are traditionally weak seasonally. So we're going to watch this number. Um, Jobless rate fell last week because more people entered the workforce. Now, we have a lot of immigration coming into our country. So 3 million people have come in, in uh, you know, into these numbers. And so they're entering the workforce. They got to work. And so labor participation is going up. So even though the, remember we talk about the birth rate, not keeping up with the death rate, but a great offset is immigration. You bring more people into this country, find the American dream. And you know what? You're going to have an offset for not enough people having children to keep up with the people dying. Um, speaking of dying, I'm going to get into um, car safety in a second. If I can, if I can get, if I can get through it, um, there was a really big, by the way, that labor participation rate rose by 0.2%. So 
to 62.7. The ISM, uh, that's Institute for Supply Management Services. These are very big data points that are out there. Um, I mean, literally ISM services, manufacturing data. This is huge data. There's a price component that came out in the ISM services component, and it actually went down. So the prices of services actually fell. Now, we also know that growth is slowing. We know that GDP is slowing. Uh, we know that, um, and I'm going to get into earnings, Q1, uh, Q1 earnings seasons, it's kicking off Friday with the financial st- uh, institutions. Um, but we know that, um, you know, just to recap, Q3 last year, 4.9%. Q4, 3.4%. The early estimate for Q1, 2.5%. Now, that's growth, but it's slowing growth. And slowing growth with slowing wage inflation, slowing household job creation for full-time employment, the government spending, which is great. I'm not going to hate on the government. Jobs being created because of you know government spending, and which of course we have to finance by selling treasuries. Um, and you know there was not a great auction yesterday on the three year note. So growth is slowing, and will earnings growth slow? Q1 earnings season for the stock market has started. I am not a financial advisor. I am not responsible for your losses, only your profits. I'm even going to give you a couple stock tips here. Q, uh, Q4 earnings came in good. That's why the stock market's been rallying, okay? Stock market's been great. Um, we had 2.9% uh, fourth quarter earnings for the S&P 500. Now, at the end of December, the estimate, the early estimate from FactSec uh, was that Q1 earnings, which start being reported this week, was supposed to be 5.7%. Well, now... The most recent estimate for Q1 is 3.4% earnings growth for the S&P 500 stocks, okay? So that's also slowing growth. Now, it's a stock picker's market. If you pick the right stocks, remember I said I'm not a financial advisor. Tesla's not doing deliveries. They're not delivering as much. They haven't delivered on um, robo-taxis and autonomous driving yet. They do have full self-driving. Think about all these drivers out there. You know, You remember when I said in 27 states, the number one job is truck driver? What happens when all these people, those part-time employment who are drivers and Ubers and Lyft, and now there's autonomous driving, you can send these cheap little Teslas all over the place, it will crush the driver uh, economy, it will crush Lyft, it will crush uh, Uber. By the way, it's been getting more expensive to if you've ever ordered Uber for those of us that travel. Think of what that AI, that's what, Tesla's an AI company. They've had their eyeballs on the world learning how to drive cars autonomously without a human being. That's AI. That's a deflationary force that will absolutely impact our economy, um, I think, in a positive way. Um, but earnings season kicks off. All the big banks, City, Goldman, Chase, JP Morgan Chase, they all start on Friday. Uh, but the number tomorrow for CPI, it could move the market either way. We could watch that 10-year Treasury go up or down. Um, is inflation sticky? Um, is it going to stick around? We know that the numbers on the CPI, because there's so much housing into it, or high numbers, the three point this, three point that. Um, I am going to just give you one last little stat here. By the way, there are thirty seven hundred deaths every day on the road, and ninety four percent of it is due to human error. Teslas are five times safer than human drivers. Uh, there's like one autopilot death because a dude was playing a stupid video game, um, and that happened in two thousand eighteen. Literally hit a median. Um, and so guilty of letting my car drive it, but I do try and keep my head up. Um, there's a lot of safety measures, by the way, on the software. It makes you touch the wheel and look. It watches your eyeballs. If you wear sunglasses, it can't see whether you're looking or not. A little pro tip there. Um, 1.269 million people die each year because of their own mistakes driving. Imagine what AI from Tesla can do for that. Um, so we talk about the death rate, you know, outdoing the birth rate. Well, what if we put 1.269 million people right there in a safe car? So um, AI is useful. It's coming. Big CPI print tomorrow. I think it'll come in right at 0.3% at the core. Um, so we'll have an elevated core number for CPI. The market, you know, maybe the 10-year treasury will calm, calm down, get back below, get back in that 4.2 range, you know, get down to 4.2. But if it comes in hot, we could shoot back up to 4.4, 4.52, big resistance level. Then we'll have higher rates for a little bit of time. Have a great one. We'll be watching that mo- uh, data in the morning. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents. 
a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.